We saw a break in rates and the cracks in labor. That's what happened this week that actually drove rates down from the highest they had been since December 2000 back towards 7%. Now this is the national average interest rate. So not specific to you personally, but definitely a guideline. As we watched rates dropping over the last couple of days, I want to get into why. What happened this week that moved the markets? So let's first start off with Jackson Hole because I'm going to say, yes, that was last Friday, but that set the tone for the, last of the, the rest of this week. So the Jackson Hole Symposium, Powell came out saying that although inflation has moved down from its peak, it remains high. He said that we needed to continue to stay at this restrictive level until we saw sustainable movement downward. He reiterated several times that the 2% goal was sticking, that he was not going to budge from that and allow it to be an average of 2%, which is what we heard during the COVID years. So we're sticking with 2% and he's going to keep the Fed rate higher for longer in order to be able to manage inflation. There were a couple of quotes during his 18 minute speech at Jackson Hole where he said, we've seen two months of good inflation reports, but two months isn't enough. We are going to remain data dependent. He also said that after decelerating sharply over the last 18 months, the housing sector is showing signs of picking back up. Now, I don't know what you're looking at, but when I look at the housing sector, it doesn't show signs of picking back up other than the fact that we are continuing to see prices appreciate because as inventory dropped, so did demand. Demand has dropped with high interest rates and inventory has dropped because, well, sellers are buyers and they're not selling. So I don't know that we have a strong housing market yet, but we certainly have a strong economics around housing. He also said that he requires a below trend for a period of time before he's willing to get off the gas, before he's willing to start lowering the Fed rate. What that tells me is it could be middle to end of next year before we start to see the Fed rate come down. But now the Fed rate is not the 30 year fixed. We're gonna see the 30 year fix come down before the Fed rate does because it's tied to that core inflation. And when that sticky inflation drops, so goes the 30 year fixed. He also said, in conclusion, we are navigating by the stars under cloudy skies. Now, I can offer some quips like that and I kinda of liked it for a second, but then I was like, I'm not sure I want my Fed chair doing that. Cause I was like, huh? <laughs> That's kind of how I listened to the entire meeting. I was like, so housing sector is strong, huh? And two good inflation reports isn't enough, get that. So let's talk about what happened though this week. Cause that all happened on Friday. But this week we saw some massive moves in the market due to the cracks in labor. In fact, it started with some good news that mortgage purchase applications went up 2% while interest rates were still high. Now that the mortgage purchase applications come out every Thursday morning, but they measure the previous week, Thursday through Tuesday. So this is when rates were still high, but given that rates came down, they came down because of labor. So the JOLT report started it out this week. And after the JOLTS report, we had several additional reports that continue to support this new lower interest rate. Now, I wanna stop myself right there for just a second because these lower interest rates aren't a trend yet. I don't want you to think, well, if I wait just a little bit longer, they're gonna be 5% again. We know that interest rates go down and then we also know that they're volatile and they can go up. In fact, they can go up tomorrow based on unemployment and the BLS jobs report. But for right now, the JOLT report gave us a sign of a crack. It showed us that the job openings dropped significantly over the last two months. And remember too, the JOLT report, those job openings actually are somewhat artificially inflated because if a company does multiple job openings across the country, because you can work remote, or they have multiple job openings or listings using different keywords or titles, 
you could have a number that would be higher than the actual. So those jolts numbers though, the job openings came down. That's a good sign. It's going to show that we have a little bit of the loosening of the job market. We also saw that quits, layoffs, and hires are starting to return to pre-pandemic numbers. That's what we want to see. Then ADP came out and private payroll actually hired fewer people and fewer new jobs created since March. This is a good sign. Now, the ADP report is a little suspect. It hasn't been in alignment with BLS. More people are watching the BLS jobs report coming out on Friday, but this is a good sign and we'll take it and it allowed for the rates to continue to come down. Now, initial jobless claims came out on Thursday and it actually dropped. Now, we're seeing less job openings. We're seeing quits and hires going back to pre-pandemic. We're seeing the ADP numbers come down. So why is initial jobless claims not keeping up? You would have thought it would have gone up. More people would have gone on unemployment. What's happening is a quiet cutting. So what does a quiet cutting mean? Quiet cutting is when companies, and there are a number of big companies doing this, quiet cutting is when they tell you that that job no longer exists. Yes, you have been a manager of that department for the last five years, but due to taking the company in a different direction, that job no longer exists. So we're not gonna lay you off, we're gonna put you in a lower position for lower pay. That's called quiet cutting. As those people are moved into lower positions for lower pay, they have the choice if they're gonna stay on employment or if they're gonna go leave. And if they leave voluntarily, they're not gonna get unemployment, it's gonna cost less to the employer. And that's why the initial jobless claims, which measures when people go on unemployment, is going down. So quiet cutting. GDP came out this week when it was revised further down. So from 2.4 to 2.1, you're like, well, that doesn't sound like good news, but it is. It's good news because it means the economy is slowing. Remember, we've been needing the economy to slow to people to, uh, for people to stop spending, consumers to stop spending, for the GDP to come down, for inflation to come down, and then our interest rates will come down. While people were spending out all their federal stimulus money, we were seeing that the spending was staying increased and it wasn't al allowing the economy to slow down. So the Fed has been raising the Fed rate substantially to get us to stop spending. We're finally seeing some of those cracks and we're seeing the GDP was revised further down from 2.4 to 2.1. So what did that do to the markets? You've got a couple of reports that all came out within a couple of days showing some cracks in labor. Well, the market liked it. Gold liked it. Gold actually did very well. The stocks liked it. They actually popped uh, up after the reports came out. And then the 10-year treasury liked it. The 10-year treasury yield went down as the 10-year tre prices went up. So this was a gift that I will take all day long because this dropped um, our interest rates from that high from 2000 back down to around 7%. Remember, your interest rate is dependent on your situation. You know who didn't like it? The employees. So Glassdoor Employee Confidence Index is down. People are fearful of losing their jobs or getting that pay cut. That is a very real feeling that's going on in the market right now. And we're starting to see some of those consumer spendings come down. In fact, there is something called the real GDP, the gross domestic product, and GDI. That is the income that's produced from the gross domestic product. So you have goods and services that are sold here in the United States, and you have the income that is a result of those activities. That GDI typically runs right along with the GDP, if not slightly over. And what we're seeing lately is the income is less for the same product produced. So that income and that tightening is starting to feel is starting to be felt. In fact, based on that, as well as student loans, we know that consumer spending is set to slow down in the back half of 2023 into the first half of 2024, which is going to impact us with lower interest rates once that catches up. So we'll be watching for that. And then PCE came out just this morning on Thursday. It was up 0.2% on a month over month, but we saw that it increased year over year from 3% to 3.3. The core increased 
1% to 4.2. Yet on a month over month basis, they both increased only 0.2. 0.2 is good. We actually need it to be on average 0.16. That would give us the 2%. That's the Fed's goal. But I'll take this. It's actually went up year over year because last year it was a negative number and it's all based on comparisons. This didn't move the market. And we also know that housing is still lagging. The actual housing data and the cost to rent a property right now is less than what is showing up in our inflation numbers. So that is artificially keeping our inflation up higher than it should be. Consumer spending is still strongish. It's getting weaker. It's 0.8%. We are going to start to see that coming down as consumers spend less during the fall. And the savings rate dropped to 3.5%. Remember, the historic average is 8% here in the United States. And that dropped significantly this last month as people are running up their credit cards, which it hit a trillion. And they're also uh, spending out their savings, which they got during the pandemic. So I'm going to leave you with this. Interest rates are still high. We know home prices are continuing to go up. We know that demand is meeting supply because supply is limited. We know the largest age groups today are 33 and 21, and that demand is pent up. But right now, it seems overwhelming. Credit card debt is up. Consumer spending is still happening. And you might be thinking, I want to hold on to that 3% interest rate and stay in the home that I don't even like anymore because it seems like the most obvious choice. We have been working with a lot of our clients in doing a consolidation. Do you have other debts? Do you have student loan debt, which is now kicking back off again? Do you have high interest credit card debt? Do you have a home equity line of credit that you got several years ago that now is coming up where it's actually adjusting at much higher interest rates? If we took the equity in your current home and moved you into a more appropriate home and consolidated that debt, you'll actually save hundreds, if not thousand dollars a month. That is where the strategy is in this market. But for right now, interest rates drop and we'll take the win. We'll take the win with the cracks in labor and we'll continue to watch next week to see where this market takes us.